bridging the gap from left to right, from black to white, from rich to poor, from the free to the oppressed, from east to west, from power to empowerment, from God to Muhammad to none, from now to tomorrow, never done. It starts with a moment of connection, a single word, hello, marhaban, shalom, a simple gesture. Two strangers, three promises, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, or four pillars of learning. These connections can provide the foundational building blocks for understanding, which over time provide us the ability to bridge a gap and strengthen not only our workplace, but indeed our global community. A connection that moves us from a weak, weakened place of individualized polarization to a strengthened position of collective effectiveness. A connection which invites an infinite possibility of connections and galvanizes our focus and commitment to engaging people, advancing ideas, and igniting change. Welcome to the Forum on Workplace Inclusion. I'm Stephen Hummerkhaus, the Executive Director of the Forum, and it is my honor to serve as your host for the next two days. In this, our 31st year of the Forum, we will continue to explore avenues of thought and action to advance the work of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Just to get a quick level set, by a show of hands, how many of you are first-time attendees at the Forum? Wow, excellent, that's fabulous, welcome. We are so glad you are here. And to our returning attendees, we look forward to challenging you in new ways and for you to return the favor. In order for the Forum to be truly effective, we need what only you can provide, your active participation and your inspired engagement. Sharing your experience through your personal lens is critical to the collaborative success of the forum. As in the past, this year we have a series of incredible workshops led by equally remarkable presenters. These sessions are designed to encourage interaction and we trust you will commit to activating your curiosity and offering candid observations in order for each of you to be as much a teacher as a learner because at the end of the day, we have all so much to learn from each other. And because our world is changing so rapidly, it's vital that we gather as much relevant knowledge as we can. This knowledge enables us to readily recognize where we are already connected and to more quickly determine where there are gaps that need to be bridged and concrete steps we can take to bridge them. I can promise you the next two days will not be easy. They will be a challenging deep dive exploration of the stubborn roadblocks to inclusion and the potential bridges available to span these disconnects. It's our hope that you will take the valuable insights you gain here and bring them back to your coworkers, your colleagues, and your communities. Now, because the forum has so many moving parts, I've solicited the help of two gifted members of the Twin Cities Theater and Improvisational Community to serve as my co-co-hosts and to bring us all up to speed on the formalities, functions, and fun of the forum. So please welcome Jim Detmar and Ashanti Ford, our bridge to what's happening at the forum. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good, a lively crowd. Now, Ashanti, I can only assume you are as thrilled as they are and I am to be here. I am, Jim, and but even more excited that we have with us 1,580 participants what? from 39 states and 15 countries, including Australia, Canada, Germany, India, Israel, Japan, Mexico, Norway, Pakistan, South Africa, South Korea, Spain, United Arab Emirates, the United Kingdom, and the USA. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to do you one better. What, what, what? Because a surprise, we have 16 countries. Let's hear from the folks from Botswana oh. that are here. Come on. Awesome. Yeah, last minute, <laughs> they showed up. Now, 
Our first order of business is to check in with our guests uh, to find out not only what they're thinking and feeling, but also what they know and what they believe. Which means it's our time to get our poll on. Jim and I are going to do are going to present a number of polling questions, and we need your answers to help illuminate where everyone currently stands on forum-related topics. So get out your phones or tablets, um, pull up the conference app or your browser, and go to pollev.com backslash wforum2019. Got it. Or text. WForum 2019 to 22333. 22333. Correct. And send your response at that time. All right. Everybody got your stuff out and ready? Okay. Now we're going to start by tossing out just a couple of easy questions to get your polling feet wet before we get down to more mm -hmm. serious matters at hand. So here we go with our first question. Ooh. Which type of device are you answering this question on? Apple or Android? There's only two options. All right, great. Here, look, it's coming in now. Oh, nice. nice Here's our nice. results. You can see them up on the big screen what up there. iPhone iPhone, out here. Android's just bouncing around between 20, 22, 23. I have to say, to I'm seeing Android all day. All right, great. <laughs> all right, way to go, iPhone. <laughs> all right, second question is going to get a little tougher. Minnesota is called the land of 10,000 lakes. What should it be called? The land of A, Ludafisk and Lefsa? <laughs> B, 10,000 potholes, C, 5 million mosquitoes, or D, 10 million hot dishes. And for those of you who aren't familiar with hot dish, that's AKA casserole. <laughs> Pretty much the same thing. So let's, oh, look at the potholes, especially this time of year. Who to go to figure that potholes would be at 44%? I'd have to vote B myself. 5% uh, of people even knew what Lodafest and Lefsa was. And that's okay, you don't wanna know. Uh, question number three, how many times have you attended the forum? One, two to four, five to seven, or uh, too many to remember? All right, this is my first time actually. I'm gonna raise my Not hand because they did earlier. That's two, <laughs> we aren't on our, our devices, but 75%? Yeah. Oh wow. Wow, that's, that is fabulous. And we hope that you keep coming back. Mm -hmm. and we're glad, so glad you're here. All right, next question, number four. Why are you here? Is it A, to increase your awareness and knowledge of or, uh, issues of diversity, B, to share your insights and thoughts on inclusion, C, to meet people and network, or D, because your boss told you you better be here. <laughs> so answer, <laughs> I'm going to make oh. the people who said my boss told me to be here stand up because I want to know. <laughs> now, 78% nice. want to increase their uh, awareness and knowledge, and that's fabulous. We, awesome. are, we are glad you were here. Welcome yes. to our friends that are just coming in at this mm -hmm. time. Next one, back uh, to you, Question Ashanti. number five, and this one gets a little bit trickier, but using just one word, tell us what industry you represent. All right, one word. So it could be banking. Banking. It could be education, mm -hmm. food and beverage, that's, which is... That's three words. That's three words. <laughs> so you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, so they're going to show up in here, sort of a cloud mm -hmm. form. So oh, banking awesome. is big. Healthcare also. Construction. Uh, insurance. Government. Aerospace. Consumer goods? Yeah, that's a lot of good stuff. Oh. I don't see one that says theater. Great. Well. <laughs> All right, it doesn't matter. We're representing for the there theater people. All right, great. Yeah, look at that as it changes. That's good. Okay, one final question. Again, using only one word, we want you to state the condition of diversity, equity, and inclusion in your workplace. So just one word. It could be wonderful or non-existent. Mm. And that is just one word, non-existent. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I know you're checking me. So I put in one word that talks about mm. what it is like, what DEI and i is like in your oh, really work environment, in your workplace, in your workforce. Evolving, that's mm -hmm. great. Growing. Growing. Yikes. I see lacking. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. And I also see meh. <laughs> and they spelled it right, M-E-H. Meh. Meh. Supported. And I also got Ew. I saw poop. <laughs> yikes. Who said yikes? <laughs> All right, great. We want to, hopefully during the course of this conference, these things will change and when you take this stuff back to your workplace mm -hmm. and share your knowledge with them, we'll also continue to evolve and grow. Mm -hmm. Now, we also are going to ask you to use your polling apps for this morning for a Q&A during our fireside chat with Medtronic CEO, Omar Ishrak, and also tomorrow morning during our keynote Q&A with Emmy and Peabody Award winning documentarian Dia Khan. Now, we really want to get your input. I know you'll have questions during the course of this. And here's the key. Don't wait until the, the keynote is finished to ask your questions. In the moment, if something bubbles up or something you really want to know happens, get on that app and load your question and send it at that time, and hopefully we'll get a chance to answer as many of those as we can. So again, this morning, when uh, CEO Omar Ishraq comes out and we have our 
Fireside Chat right over here. Get ready to have your questions because they're going to want to hear them. Mm -hmm. And because we love connecting with our audience, we invite you to share your overall thoughts on the conference using our social media channels. Yep. Um, chances are we'll share your thoughts too on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and our digital social wall. Yeah, that's great. Oh, well, you know what? That pretty much wraps it up oh, for us. I'm okay. going to get Steven back out here. Steven, where Steven. are you? We are, we're all finished up and we're ready for you. Excellent. <laughs> Did you, were you getting on your polling device back there? Yes. Excellent. <laughs> all right. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Hummond. Android, go Android. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim and Ashanti. We'll check back with you later for any kind of breaking updates that we need to get from them. Putting together the forum is truly a year-long test of one's fortitude, aptitude, attitude, adaptitude, and patience. It's not only that there's the challenge of winnowing down all the remarkable workshop submissions we received, and by the way, we had 229 proposals this year for 100 slots. Uh, so with that, but also we are charged with the task of assembling the perfect slate of keynote speakers based on availability and sustainability and of course affordability. Yet even more daunting is making certain that we deliver a cohesive overall learning experience with distinct attainable and actual outcomes. To that end, we have committed to four foundational pillars of learning that support the forum theme, Bridging the Gap. These pillars are for this year, addressing the gaps in values and beliefs that cause toxicity at work. Bridging the gap from the inclusion to the integration of diverse perspectives and experiences. Bridging the gap between technology and human experience, wisdom and insight. And an examination of cultural power and privilege in order to bridge the gap between empowerment and power. In today's opening session, we will focus on how we can embed diversity, equity, and inclusion into how we go about our work. Bridging the gap from inclusion of diverse perspectives and experiences to integration of the perspectives and experiences. Joining us to further that discussion today will be Omar Ishraq, Chairman and CEO of Medtronic, who made a personal and organizational commitment to taking measurable action to advance diversity and inclusion at Medtronic by becoming a signatory for the CEO Action for Diversity and Inclusion Initiative. Now, we'll talk more about the CEO Action in a few minutes, but first I want to call out one of our major exhibits connected to CEO Action. In 2019, the Check Your Blind Spots Unconscious Bias Educational Tour Bus will be making stops in over 100 cities across the country, inviting people in these communities to get on the bus and learn about and explore ways to mitigate unconscious bias in their everyday lives. So Uh, talk about perfect timing. That is the Blind Spots bus, which is on display in the former's marketplace of ideas for the next two days. And here to discuss how you can hop on that bus and make your own commitment to advancing diversity and inclusion in your workplace. Please welcome Miss Elena Richards. Good morning, everyone. My name is Elena Richards, and you heard about the bus. Um, I lead talent management and minority initiatives for PwC, and it's a pleasure to be with you all this morning. In addition to the work that I do around talent management, I am also responsible for the work that we do as a firm around unconscious bias education and have the privilege of working with Dr. Mazarin Banaji from Harvard University and a project that we started, which is called Outsmarting Human Minds. And the hope with the work is really to get ourselves better at how do we understand and appreciate and build our awareness around bias. And the more that we can build that muscle and learn about our biases, the better off we'll be with making better decisions in work and in life. So if you have the opportunity, you're gonna hear many plugs for that bus, I want to make sure that that's one of the top things that you do while you're here with us today over the course of the next two days. It is in Tower B. Little did I know that the work would come into play with respect to this business environment that we're all in. And it ties together nicely with this initiative called CEO Action for Diversity and Inclusion. In our society, in July of 2016, when Tim Ryan 
our chairman and president of the organization. We didn't understand or appreciate what was happening that week in July when he became chairman. And there were a lot of racially driven shootings that you may remember in the news of unarmed black gentlemen. Um, and in his role, what Tim decided to do was bring diversity and inclusion into the conversation. And by bringing it into the conversation, he started to make sure that it became a business community issue, that it was our obligation as organizations to really bring the conversation broader than just business. So we all have a responsibility to drive it not only within the walls of our companies, but also in the society that we all live in, as well as the colleges and universities that we are part of. So it's with that work that this coalition was formed and today stands at more than 600 plus organizations that have signed the pledge. What they have committed to, thank you, yes, that's worth a round of applause. What these organizations led by their chairman have committed to is the work around conversations within the walls. Let's talk about things like race. Let's talk about the difficult conversations around diversity and inclusion. Let's not check that at the door. We also want to make sure we're educating ourselves around our potential blind spots so that we make better informed decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. And not that we're not going to make them, but the hope is that we'll make better ones the next time we have to make another decision. So we're not all perfect. As diversity and inclusion practitioners, many of you are doing the work that we do. But as we move forward, how do we make better decisions? So the hope is that we'll also then continue to share best practices. This coalition is formed with this 600 Together Strong, colleges and universities, some of which you'll hear from, Omar, Skip, and Julie later on today or this morning. What we need to do is continue to have these dialogues and push the envelope. Because if we all get better, we are making the future better for the talent that's coming behind. So let's think about the colleges and universities that are also part of the coalition. They are uh, bridging together with us and joining in this journey. So St. Thomas is one of the signatories as well. The coalition has done a lot in the short few years that we bring together the CEOs to make sure that we've gone to over many colleges and universities, co uh, corporate campuses, but also making sure that over 12 million employees have been touched by this work. We span over 19 various industry, 85, sorry, corporate industries, and 19 plus um, areas within the realm of opportunities to share best practices. So if you go to that CEO Action site, you can sort by different areas that may be of interest and help you in the work that we're trying to all advance. So the hope with the coalition is how do we all do better together? If we work together, can we, as a business and, and college and university community, from a leadership perspective, drive the change that we're trying to do? So that is the hope with the coalition. I hope if you want to hear more information, there are gonna be many people around. And if for nothing else that you stop by that bust to understand and appreciate what we're all trying to learn and get better at. The other thing I would like to ask of all of you is that you take an opportunity to learn something different from someone that's in the room today. Because diversity and inclusion isn't only about learning about our differences, but the more that we talk to each other and build relationships, the more we are better at learning about what we perceive the other person's um, bias may be. So how do we break down some of the walls and build relationships? So education is important. Um, and that the first step in doing that is not being afraid to learn and talk to new people. So as you go through the next couple of days, I hope that you can do that. The other thing about this pledge and the work that we're doing that I want to at least make sure you appreciate is that we can all collectively take the pledge. So there's an I act on pledge. What is your personal commitment to making sure that you're mindful of your own blind spots, meeting new people, educating ourselves, and moving the work forward? So thank you for being here. Thank you for stopping by the bus. And hopefully, you'll learn a little bit about how our CEOs in this next segment will be moving together what we're trying to all co accomplish collectively.
Have a great session. Thank you so much, Elena, for illuminating the power that understanding can hold over unconscious bias as we continue to move to a workplace of more robust diversity and inclusion. And to all of you here in the audience, make sure to take time to explore the forum marketplace of ideas and tour the Blind Spots bus. As we know, knowledge is power, and the bus is filled with tools to advance your knowledge and provide incredibly helpful insights. Now at this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce not only a signatory of the CEO Action Pledge and a relentless advocate of the champion of our work, but she is also the president of the University of St. Thomas. Please welcome Dr. Julie Sullivan. Thank you, Steve. And congratulations on another successful opening of the Forum on Workplace Inclusion. The University of St. Thomas is proud to have been a part of the Forum's history for more than two decades. And we are pleased to have helped the Forum become one of the largest workplace DEI conferences in this country. We know more great things are in store as you embark on a new partnership with Augsburg University. I also would like to thank Elena from the CEO Action Pledge for being here today and sharing the great work she and PwC are doing to help businesses and higher education institutions advance diversity and inclusion within the workplace. The University of St. Thomas is excited that we will be hosting the bus on our campus in a few short weeks. And I'm really proud that we are among the higher education leaders who have signed the CEO Action Pledge. This is work that we all must prioritize and we all must do together, so thank you. At the University of St. Thomas, we are dedicated to diversity and inclusion. It is integral to our mission of educating life-ready, values-based leaders who can persuasively communicate, see connections, and solve complex problems in a rapidly changing world. Our convictions of dignity, diversity, and personal attention call us to embody and champion a diverse, equitable, and inclusive environment at St. Thomas and in our broader world. We take responsibility to create and promote a culture that advances these values. This past year, we have taken a deep dive into identifying and examining our own institutional barriers to inclusion. Every organization has them, and it's very important to commit the time and the energy to identify these barriers and examine how we can bring them down. At St. Thomas, we are scrutinizing our policies when it comes to hiring and retaining employees, recruiting students, providing financial aid, and creating curriculum. We're making this hard work a permanent part of our operations as our university, and we are committing to sustaining cultural and structural change at St. Thomas and beyond. I'm honored to be in a room full of leaders this morning who are dedicated to the work of diversity and inclusion. Thank you for being here today and to learn from one another and for leading by example. As Elena said, we're all here to learn. We must keep that top of mind. 